Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Every now and then we hear one of those stories where somebody is upset at somebody they owe money to. So they go, okay, fine, I'll pay them, but I'm going to pay them in pennies or nickels or coins. And we've heard a couple stories like that in the last few years, including that one guy who dumped a wheelbarrow full of pennies in someone's driveway. Uh, but this one is a new one out of Colorado from CBSNews.com. A lot of people sent this to me, including Cameron by Brian Mass. A Larimer County judge ruled late the other day, that a northern Colorado welding company acted maliciously and in bad faith when it paid a $23,500 settlement to a subcontractor in coins that ended up weighing more than three tons, three tons. Uh, The judge ordered the company and its owner to pay a subcontractor by a more conventional method, such as a check, and further ordered the company to pay the attorney's fees and costs of the other side for having to follow through with this. And the judge wrote that the stunt with the coins delayed the case being closed and was intended to annoy and harass the other side. So that's an interesting situation because if this had happened without a court case being in place, this probably wouldn't have come out the same way. However, the parties were in court, they worked out a settlement, and then in an attempt to fulfill the settlement, one side says, okay, here's your several tons of coins. And because this is over seen by a court, well, that's a little different. So the owner uh, of the company uh, that provided all of the uh, coins has not responded to numerous requests for comment. The case began when the welding company said it acted as a subcontractor for the big company, but the company refused to pay them for the work they had done. So they filed a lawsuit that went to arbitration. The sides agreed to settle. So it wasn't an arbitrator award that said, okay, we're going to say here's what you pay. They agreed to settle. They worked out a settlement. And so they said, okay, fine. This company will pay that company $23,500. That was a settlement that they struck. When it came time to pay, the company sent a flatbed truck loaded with a specially constructed box jammed with coins weighing 6,500 pounds. The box was filled with loose quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So they weren't rolled, they weren't packaged, and they attempted to have the box delivered in August to the attorney at her downtown Denver office, and that's the attorney for the company that's owed the money. The attorney called the tactic petty and a grand waste of time and said the coin delivery was a symbolic middle finger. She said even if she'd wanted to accept the awkward payment, she couldn't because her building's freight elevator can only hold a maximum of 3,000 pounds. She called the attempted coin delivery a major F.U. Uh, Meanwhile, the judge appeared to agree with the attorney's assessment. In his four-page ruling, he noted the defendants apparently obtained the coins in various denominations in neatly organized boxes, but then took the extra step of removing the coins from the boxes and dumping them loosely and randomly into the large metal container. The court finds that the defendants acted maliciously and in bad faith. Meanwhile, the attorney told CBS News, I appreciate the judge's order. I'm hopeful that this will resolve this matter so that the parties can move on. Uh, In ordering the company to pay the attorney fees and costs, the judge wrote the coin stunt was a tactic aimed at frustrating and undermining the plaintiff's ability to receive the full benefit of its bargain by making payments so cumbersome and costly as to reduce the net amount of the settlement. The judge gave the company 14 days to cough up a check certified bank check, or some other standard manner of payment to pay what it owes. Uh, The attorney told CBS News Colorado she's asking for more than $8,000 in attorney fees from the company, and of course that would not be payable in coins, which they point out here. (laughs) Thank you for pointing that out. And so a lot of people will hear this and go, Steve, money's money. If I want to pay you in pennies, dollar bills, certified funds, what's the difference? Well, the big difference here is that this was being overseen by a court. And the court said, you know, you guys go to arbitration. At the arbitration, they reached a settlement. And they said, we'll pay you this money. And obviously, when you deliver a box weighing 6,500 pounds that's filled with $23,000 in loose change, and you went to the trouble of unrolling it, it's pretty obvious what you're doing. Now, I understand what you're saying, you're just saying, Steve, but, but the money is still worth what the money is worth. Well, it's worth that once you roll it, okay? You, you will have a hard time transporting around this 6,500-pound batch of coins 
and getting them taken someplace. Now, I understand there's coin counting machines. I understand that there's companies out there that'll do this. I understand there's banks that'll do this. But it's going to be a hellacious waste of time for somebody. And when the court looks at this, which the court will do because they're overseeing this, as I've noted before, the court's going to look at this and go, okay, you could have paid them with the money that you went to the bank to get all those coins, but instead you converted it to coins and then busted those coins up into loose change. Yeah, um, it doesn't look like you're operating there in good faith. And so I agree with the judge in this case. Now, if this had been a different situation, let's assume that no lawsuit had been filed, that the subcontractor called up the contractor and said, hey, you guys owe us $23,500. They said, fine, we'll pay you. And they showed up with a 6,000-pound box of change. Okay? Now, I don't think that's the best way to handle business. But on the other hand, would that fulfill their obligations to make the payment? Because you'll recall the case that was involving the guy with the wheelbarrow of change in his driveway. One of the problems is that those coins were said to have been soaked in oil or something to make them more annoying. And there's no allegation of that here. There's only the allegation that it's a ton, literally tons, <laughs> tons of money, change, and it's a pain to handle them. But it is, in fact, the money you are owed. And I can tell you right now, I've had clients before who had cases that we won where we couldn't get the defendants to pay us. And if I had said, by the way, they're willing to pay you, they're just going to pay you in 6,000 pounds of change, my clients would say, bring it on, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, and Mr. Leto, if you get one third, we'll weigh that for you, okay? I mean, <laughs> so, but, you know, this is one of those things that it's simply because of the context that this happened in the setting of a case being overseen by a court. And the court said, okay, you guys settle the case, we'll settle the case. And courts have the power to oversee a case all the way through to its end and sometimes even beyond. And I've seen settlement agreements that say specifically that while the court you know, will dismiss this case when it's fully over, the court will also continue to have jurisdiction to oversee the settlement, make sure the settlement is maintained by the parties uh, so that you don't have to file a brand new action to start complaining about something that may have been very easy to fix otherwise. So it's a crazy case. Cameron sent it along with a bunch of other people. Thank you very much. Brian Moss wrote it, and it's out of Larimer County, uh, Colorado, where a lot of the stuff that happened to Timothy Masters happened. And I wrote a book with Timothy about uh, Drawn to Injustice about his case where he spent 10 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. Just happened to have a copy sitting on my desk because I pulled it out the other day talking about something else. But uh, <laughs> that's how my life is. There's just stuff on my desk. What's that doing there? I don't know. Colorado judge says company acted maliciously and in bad faith in coin stunt, and as a result, they're going to pay more money, not in coins. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It does not matter where you are coming from, all that matters is where you are going.